Okay, uh, laminate or edging two and three are in place. And he, these three clamps you see here are at the uh, joints where they come together. I'll be cutting that back to put an accent piece in there. And, uh, you know, like every good project, if you can't hide a joint, act, you know, uh, make it uh, accent the joint, I guess. So, this is going to sit for at least a couple, three hours. I'm going to turn my attention to the, the base and start getting that attached to the legs. But I like the way it's going so far. Uh, the proof will be when I can flip it over, take the clamps off, and take a good inspection of this side uh, just to see how the joint looks. Haven't been able to really do that yet. So I'm hoping everything is as tight on the on this side as it is on this side. And I got the uh, base apart, and then what I did was uh, put shadow marks on these where the legs were before I took it apart. Uh, mark them so that this will end up on leg three, leg two, leg one. Now I'm just taking, and then I took my beam compass here and made marks uh, all the way around inside the shadow box here, and then uh, that's about two inches from the outside edge. And now I'm locating a center mark, which is right here. And that's where I'll drill my hole. Uh, on each of these. Alright, I've got this kind of counterweighted to keep it from flopping and I can put it in position, which I've done already. I'm just going to drill my 16th inch pilot hole here. I've got it up on blocks because this bit is so short. It won't go through. <laughs> for the washer, uh, the countersink I should say for the washer. Now I've got a 5 16 bit in here and I'm going to do each of these operations by not moving this to make sure I stay centered. Okay, I've got this back in position, and then when I say that, it's uh, with quotes. Uh, this is very close to where it was originally, but when you take this apart and put it back together, the chances of this getting lined up exactly where it was before are pretty slim. But this one is pretty much right on the money, and the other two are just a hair off. And that's the reason you got to have these expanded holes so that you can have a little wiggle room. So I'll tap this one. I forgot my mallet. This is what I'm putting in there. Quarter inch, uh, quarter twenty thread inside, and then I don't know what size drill bit, but three of those. So let me go look that information up, and I'll be right back.
with just the right amount of shims. I'm able to use my dowel jig here, dowel max. And what I did was, uh, first of all, found center, then drop my transfer punch, 3 8 transfer punch, into the mark that I made. And it's, it's near perfect. So with the built-in slop I have, this should be just fine. Got this locked in place. This as I slide this up, if you watch carefully, that right there dropped in. Lock it down and drill my hole. And get it started. Bolted and breathing. So I'm, I'm getting closer to the finish line. Uh, I can take it apart and work on the work on rounding over these edges, sanding this, getting it all set to go, and then uh, getting that top put together. And, and do it over on the three uh, bolts are yep, then below. This one is just this one is close, but I think it's yeah. We're good. Okay. Nice and solid. Nice and solid. And when I look at my witness marks here, I'm very close to where I was. So as long as it's reasonable, you're going to be fine. Okay, a couple of things. I took the clamps off, but I left the band on overnight. Uh, and I trimmed the bottom flush. That's what you see here is all this uh, is, is from trimming the bottom. Now as I, I'll get rid of that in a minute here, but as I did that, I'll bring the camera over here and show you this, but there's one joint that did not get clamped tight to the circle and I've got a decent sized gap here. And I'll show you what my plan is for taking care of that. The other thing I need to do or be concerned with is getting this uh, all in plane. I can tell that this uh, gets higher right here. Uh, these probably might be about the same, but I've got to get it level. And I'm thinking uh, 3 16 of an inch should do it. So I've got a pretty good gap right here. I've made some wedges. First of all, in, the, in, in my younger years, uh, this would have been a disaster. I'd have, I'd have had a fit. <laughs> I'd have tried to figure out a way while well, I'd be like, okay, I've got to do something here to rewrap this again to get this taken care of out here, whatever. But here's how I'm going to handle it. I made some wedges and one of these is, might be this one. I had several, yeah, this one here, this, several iterations of this. And I want to go uh, with the grain, the long grain running this way. So I've, I've chiseled out this wedge. I will put that in there and glue it in place. And all I'm concerned about is filling the gap. And I don't have to go down as deep as it is because it, I, I, really I can't because the bottom is tight, but just the top is off here. 
So I'm going to wedge this in here like so and tap it down and then make sure it gets glued tight this way and uh, let it sit. Then once that's done, I'll hand plane this round uh, again to be flush here before I cut my joint. But I want this to be in there uh, and be a part of the cut. Okay, I made this jig a while ago, and I can't remember the occasion, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming I was edging something. But this is going to work out perfect in this situation, except these uh, contact points are too far out on this radius. So I'm going to make a modification to this and cut these back, you know, like 45 degrees this way. Cut, Cut it back about three quarters of an inch, I think, and see how that, just enough to get me to slide over, over the edge. And then I can run my router and, and uh, hopefully trim everything to the same height. Well, that didn't take long. Came off pretty clean. Nice and flat here. This is not that important anyway, it's just this contact point in this one. And I think that that will get me enough room to get in into the area I need to get into. Yeah, I think so. All right, I'm going to do this without any dust collection. I, I don't want this hose uh, pulling me over. Now you see that it'll sit balanced like this but with this handle I have on here that gives me the added security of holding it there I've got it set to the top of this at some point the bit is spinning uh, clockwise and I'm gonna make a climb cut because I don't want to go against this and run the risk of tearing a piece out of here and um, I think with the little bit I'm taking off, I should be good. Okay. I got the tape off, and it wasn't as easy as it as I thought it was going to be. Most of it came off in big chunks, but there were spots that uh, it stayed in there pretty tight. So I'm just looking this over now. I think we'll be okay. I'm going to work on what's in front of me and then rotate this thing instead of trying to reach.
got some tear out here. Yeah. I plan on rounding this over a little bit, but this is where the grain switched on me. See these splinters coming off here. I'll get some glue in there. Might just super glue that back together. I thought I was filming, but I wasn't. But there's the couple of repairs. You can hardly tell that I was here. So that looks good. I'll show you what I did here. Oh, hang on. Okay. So I get it wet with the activator. Put it in where I want it. And then put some glue on it. Hit it with some sandpaper. I'm going to get this one before I go too far here. This is tight bond glue right here. Be hard pressed to see where that was.